Hello guys, welcome back to another video of Dylan Hux. Today in this video is about Welcome Rip Off Project, which has successfully made working. If you saw my last video, I mean last short video, you can see a little bit, a little glimpse of demo. And today, I'm going to explain a bit how this thing is actually work and how it go through this process of making this thing work. And it's from scratch. So if you watch my previous previous video about the welcome I speed as you can see that you can see some of the my previous setup that I've been doing with tablet um, a welcome as you can see tablet like this. But today it's actually in the form of I actually made it. I actually made the working my own tablet, my own pen tablet. Great success. From the broken keyboard that I sell it with my normal YouTuber, and it turned into something really nice. So, talking about how we're building up this thing a bit, I just used uh, my dad toy flat boot. I'm not sure what this actually is. I used the flat boot. On one side, I use the template files that I meant to put in my yoga book, but this is too slippery for me with drawing thing that, you know, a man of culture. And on another side, I just use a two sided tape, tape down the Welcome My Spacey pad back. And there is a PNC plus plus two point of my controller right here. You can see it clearly. I just use the laptop webcam. And you see some of the wire running inside the I square C line and in this is actually working. And let me show you, let me show you. Um that sweet thing. Yeah, it's working. So you can see this is an absolute mouse and the pressure is working, the battery button is working, the eraser is working just Okay, so let's get into the code real quick. So this is a code on Arduino. I want to go on Arduino because it's really simple. Although I love STM8, but sadly they don't have USB. So, so here I use the TNC++ 2.0. I think to point out is you need to select USB type of HID. Also, you need to modify some of the file that I'm gonna show you after some code explaining. So I'm gonna go real quick. So this this part is the welcome as quasi query command that I took the Linux driver that someone welcome write wrote code about almost ten years ago. Not a big deal. And this is the ice quasi address. And also talking about ice quasi a little bit, it's weird that this thing can work from one hundred kilohertz, four hundred kilohertz, all the way to one megahertz with really. Really nice, but if I'm experimenting, one megahertz, one hundred megahertz, even one hundred kilo, four, uh, one hundred megahertz, four hundred kilohertz, one hundred kilohertz doesn't have much different because when doing about them, though that they have a quick up, there's gonna be a bottleneck of the USB. The frequency is not matter anyway, so. Next is all the two thing into this. I actually need to define the thing out there because I use more. one is for reset, which is I'm not using right now because it's the thing is not five water relevant, so I don't want to kill it. And so the next one, the next thing is sorry, the this one is an input for the input. Because most of these input devices like touchscreen, thumb uh, touchscreen and digitizer, they have an interrupt for whole speaker. They're working similar to PS Flash 2 that it's not like USB that we need to work it like in the polling mode. But talking about polling, this course is actually using polling mode. They gave up on using interrupt because it's kind of buggy, it's stuck in the interrupt routine so I don't spend much time on that to go with poly and these are just most of most of the part is 
quoted from the welcome rip off project that I've written in uh, STM32, which is ported from Linux. There's not much thing here. It's just like two of these little 1913. This is the name of the ship itself. The send receive. This is this is the basic part of icebox. And we got the device query. So this is like is anyone out there? Yes, I am out there. So this is the communi initialization communication part. And I implement the firmware version checking if it's zero, which it means something really went wrong with the or compare, maybe check your ice cream tea connecting mm -hmm. or so just I square C define the pin and type it up. It's no longer used as well said earlier, it seemed to stuck in the IRQ handler. You cannot fix that, so just this that turn to pulling. And this is just initialization. Okay, we haven't shown you yet that uh if i if i actually plug this thing in there will be the irony reading right here in this a little hole that i punch on yeah just nicely LED turn on it for 0.5 seconds and yeah, it's just at least showing you that this thing is working. Again, I'll use EMAP in or PS just need to erase that. Anyway, so again, let's show here, I implement the device query. If something uh, went wrong, it will loop in this fast flashing. But I'm not big theme to that, it's just when something uh, errors like uh, connection is not made properly. So now we are in the most important part of this code beside the USB HID, that thingy stuff. So I don't want to go dig deep, deep into this because it's really complicated. So basically, it is checking if the interrupting is low. If yes, it's going to jump into that this if part and basically read the data from the i square c pad using switch data right here to determine the pen tip is hovering or the eraser tip is hovering or the pen tip is down the pen or the eraser tip is down the pen also parsing the data from the indicating the bear button and turn it into the correct way to report according to uh, USB descriptor that I wrote. And I'm going to show you that too, because that is also important. Uh, every copying, copy the X to from one to another, and then Y exit from one to another, but we need to do some inverting. You know. um, we need to invert, we grab X and Y because this is how the OEM is related to your book. It's not unusually wide, so we need to make them standard. They swap the y-axis, they just swap them back. Also, the y-axis is swapped. Uh, I mean, like, if you go up, if you go down, just simply some mathematic stuff to solve the problem. Also, the last one is to report the pressure of that when we got a nice packet of HID report packet, then we send out using this command. So the packet that we send is the first byte is report ID, which is I'm gonna explain why I require um report ID. This is for the first use. Next is gonna be the byte that contains pen tip, eraser tip, in range action, all the thing that's complicated. Complicated. We are going to want to talk about that. It's going to take really long. Also, followed by the two bytes of X axis reporting, nine axis reporting, also two bytes. And the last two bytes is pressure reporting. This is just um, the crazy part is not in here yet. 
Oh yeah, this this may be this is crazy part. It's not it's crazy as I'm not moving around. I'm gonna show you. So as we, as we talk about this part a bit, I've been spending month on this part just to make report correct. And this 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 thing will not be possible if Microsoft does not exist. Because I need to read a lot uh, documentation from Microsoft. Thanks for that to Microsoft. So this is the hardest. I'm not talking about full play song. Seriously, this is the most hardest part. Harder than the reverse engineering. Harder than the writing code. This is the hardest thing to understand and to write. Not to write to understand. This is something called the USB HID report descriptor. The way is, it's just like your ID card you sent to a uh, officer. So in this case, you have host, which is your computer, and you have the USB device, which is the TNC. In this case, I'm talking about TNC or the USB HID device. This is something that tells tell the computer that, hey, I am a mouse. I report the X and Y axis. I have left click, right click, middle click. So this is a USB standard that have been around for 17, 18 plus years now. And get this thing up and running, you need to report, um, you need to report some of the bit that Windows, well, it's based on Windows. I'm talking about Windows, not going to talk about Linux yet. You need to report all the things that Windows would want. It. So, if you have input like mouse, you want to have the X exit, Y exit, you have left click, right click, middle click is optional, but mainly you, if you, you are mouse, you want to report X and Y. In this case of digitizer, there are a couple things. The power, the first priority is, I believe, is X and Y because you need to report the coordinate of this. Also, the pin in rate. This one here. This bit will indicate that the pin is hovering or not. But in this case, no matter the tip or the eraser hovering on the pad or just touching, this bit must be set because Windows kind of really have a standard that like procedure of the device to report whatever the, the pen is hovering or the pen is touching all the user interaction must be reported clearly this is a microsoft standard that i'm not sure is from the usb or is specifically for windows but i think like linux do this way too Anyway, this is the report descriptor basically, as I said earlier, telling parameter what can I do? For in this case, is report the they have a pen tip detection. In what detection? The pen tip detection is when you press the pen tip on the the inward it the water by water is pen tip, and inward is when you flip to another side. Like, um, this is your tablet, right? This is your tablet, and I'll show you. See. Okay, so this is your tablet, this is your pen clip side, this is razor side. So, as I said earlier, the pen tip bit report if the pen tip is partially surface. The next thing is invert report that the eraser is hovering. Next one is a barrier button. It's report that if I press the barrier button right here. Next one is a eraser tip. You really need to show you. So, yeah. So this um <laughs> is short. Our report requires so, like pen tip detection, eraser detection, button detection. Another thing need to be reported to Windows.
And this is further reporting from this is the bit zero, bit number one, bit number two, bit number three, and so on. Also, you need to cut the bit to make it byte, which is mean that if you have um like five, three, two usages, it's only two or three or couple bits. It's not even a byte. When it's not even a byte, um, it can cause a serious problem because USB need to send data. Actually, it's send the part. But the computer is determined byte by byte. And in that situation, you're going to run into, I'm not sure what that may be a name for, it, but it's not built up into half a byte. Like, computer, uh, like, Telling that 155 bytes is just like 532 bytes, something up like that. It's not make sense, so we need to cut that. After this part, it should be just really simple, like the x axis report, y axis report, like moving in this y coordinate, also the hip visual. My OBS sometimes is bulky, never mind. So, this is a complicated part. Of USB and this is a USB thumb that, in perspective of user, user does not matter what my device is plug. Only one thing that they know they plug and they use. But like I'm playing role of manufacturer, this is kind of pain in the ass because if you don't have a dedicated team or you don't have people who really actually have USB knowledge. This will take a lot of effort, a lot of time to just figure it out, like my project and make this thing work. So, okay, so the explaining part is done. This is not simple thing, this is kind of part simple, part complex. But one thing that I want to show you is creating a good user for freedom. Let's get into my most favorite. All time favorite drawing program. This is Freedom. I'm not gonna show you my art book. It's really, I mean, really dangerous to show it on YouTube, but it's just open this shit anyway. So let's try. So right now, I'm using the tablet, as you can see. I'm using the tablet. I'm tablet. So I'm gonna draw something. The nice thing about this is I'll be able to make a to report the pressure also make the barrel button work um pressing like see and then yeah I still surprised that I can actually make this thing work wait a minute let me check the OBS a little bit okay it's still work so let me draw something with circle 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 not there. Anyway. So this thing is working, and what's next? I have a plan to make a better one. So we actually have this one left. This left, and I want to build this from maybe for my dad, to my mom. So this maybe go to my mom. Another one go to my dad. But the next one, I want to build the Bluetooth version. And I'm still thinking which my controller can be used. But also another thing that I'm thinking about is that will I ever make the Bluetooth version? Because will I ever have the free time? Because yeah, I just start college life and it's gonna be pain in the ass. I mean, yeah, there's still a lot of project playing around. Also, the school project for my younger brother. But anyway, don't be sad because this thing really made me happy. It is this a first thing ever that I put a lot of effort into it. I mean, about the project that I've ever made on this channel, besides of modifying my TR to calculator. I've learned a lot. I really learned a lot about this project. 
who thought from like, I just want to replace yoga book battery. But it turns out that I broke the keyboard. And luckily that I got the replacement keyboard that finally you at layout. But it turns out that I don't want to have, um, I don't want to miss this chance of practicing my reverse engineering. So I go to reverse engineer the automized craft seat. It turns out that it's really simple. I mean, I have been working with ice craft seat for a couple of years now, two, three years. I was not quite similar with, familiar with the ice craft seat, but, but I know that like waveform of it, waveform of the ice craft seat that is too pleasant. Reference. This is not actual thing where you have. I think this. Not sure about this. Stop it. Never mind about that. But this thing taught me a lot. Tell me about it. Taught me about um, reverse engineering. Also, it taught me about USB. USB RB two size because that thing is something that I've seen a lot of people have been made like if you search this Google app for my controller and USB HID, I'm sure that ninety nine percent of the projects come up would be mouse emulation, keyboard emulation, or bad USB. But something that really useful, actually useful. I mean, yeah, those things is useful, but Something that actually might like, like, um, you know, the mouse and keyboard actually have the proper one. Bad USB is kind of in the gray ish part. I'm not talking about that. Like, I want to make something that useful, but it's kind of weird and happy, like this one. It's absolutely no one making that. Maybe I've seen some people who actually do the converter for uh, touch screen, for touch screen, USB. And yeah, the only people who are working for mouse, keyboard, mouse, keyboard, joystick. And I feel like, well, the USB standard can define that you can do almost anything. There's a lot of things you can do with USB ID, but people just do mouse, and keyboard, mouse, and keyboard. I feel like, no, this is not right. We need to explore more, so that's why it's came to this project too. That is also another reason that why I made this project. I've yeah, I've learned a lot in I've learned a lot USB uh reverse engineering also. This project take me months and this is the thing that I actually really proud of because yeah just stating over and over again that because yeah yeah a river engineering this is my breakthrough this is actually the first time ever that I successfully reverse engineering electronic stuff something that I want to do for a while I mean for a couple past year I want to revert engineering thing but I don't know where to start but now I know where to start now, at least I have some quick starting. And I actually want you to do something with this too. You can grab something cool, you just probe it, take a look at the how the is work, and it's reverse engineering. Because these skills are really useful. You don't need to buy a new PC. Maybe if you reverse engineering some of the part, you can fix it. And in this case, like Instead of throwing the keyboard out, it is throwing it out. But left with something like this. It's true that it's a onboard chip, a good touch screen, but that is a broken glass. I cannot use it anymore in, in my level. I cannot do something much topically. But I just left with this hard paper, hard foil, hard electronic, hard everything. Hard pattern uh, thing. I don't want to throw it away because I know that it's still working. It's just the glass itself that broke 
the, the touch screen glass is broke and I cannot use them, you know, because yeah. This is way beyond me. This thing is still left. So I want you to find some kind of like dead laptop. You sell with part, maybe you revert hearing it, you just turn it for you with something else because this way you can actually practice yourself some new skill and this is a good way to start the right to because I really hope that more people will get into this because there is a lot of electronic ways out there. It would be like one computer if you thrown away. People say that it's not work. Maybe they just maybe they just some of the things like motherboard is stuck into a bad iOS. You reflash it, it's working again. So yeah, I want you to fix stuff. I want you to reverse engineer stuff. I want you to learn to have these skills. And I want to have those skills too. And as I show you here, this tablet taught me a lot. It's a teaching a lot. And as always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoy this welcome reflecting his stuff that I've made. And don't forget to subscribe this subscribe to this channel too. This maybe it's just a little longer. I hope that in the future I will make some better content if I put more effort and have more time on it. Yeah, so there's still a lot of project laying around. So again, guys, thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my little channel. Let's grow it up together. Bye bye, and see you again on the next video.